having creative drought or losing your wood mojo or whatever you want to call it isn't very fun. Luckily I don't suffer from it that often but when I do what I like to do is go for a walk or change my scenery a bit or do some sketching or something. The other thing I like to do when I'm suffering from creative drought is to look in books and whilst there's stuff online you know about woodworking and wood carving that you can find loads of information there's just some things in books that you can't get online. So here are my personal four favourite woodworking books to beat creative drought. Making Woodwork Aids and Devices by Robert Waring. This book is responsible for inspiring a few of my jigs from my shooting board to my centre finders and even the carving table that I made. I picked out a few of my favourite sections in this book to give you an example of what it has to offer. First one is how to make this uh, little attachment for your vise with a little rebate on the end so that you can fit in separate jaws. So this shows you how to make it all together. This is a jaw with carpet in the middle for grip. These are jaws that are tapered for tapered work. Jaws with sort of circular pieces in to hold circular things. And then a cradle, so you have like a sort of square shape in there that can hold a, all different manner of shapes, but probably for cylindrical type shapes. Um, and this is perfect for lots of different kinds of woodworking and also for carving. So that's just an example of how the book pretty much starts off. So already you can see it's got some really cool stuff in there. This section shows an improved shooting board. So you get it from all these different angles kind of explaining what the shooting board is doing. And it's got this sort of a rim or this sort of plank along the top to help the plane sit along it more flush so you don't get too much wobble on the plane when you're planing the wood. And I just thought that was a pretty cool idea. Here's a very simple scribing knife. So it's just a piece of tool steel cut off from an old saw or something like that. And it's just made flush with the blade. So they made a little rebate or a rabbit in this sort of handle here. And then put the screws down so the screws are flush as well. And then that way you can get a nice straight edge right against whatever piece of material you're using to measure it against. And this last section, I don't know if I'd ever make it, but it's for a prospective drawing board. So I think this page shows it a bit more clearly. You can see how you use this kind of T ruler up against the board to get the different angles and draw different perspectives. Hand Tools, Their Ways and Workings by Aldrin A. Watson. The illustrations in this book are fantastic and all drawn by the author. It's like an encyclopedia of hand tools, which is so incredibly hard to put down because not only are the drawings beautiful, but just the amount of description and everything that goes into it and all the different creative things that are in here is incredible. This drawing of the brace and the bits mostly just struck me as incredible artwork, really. And I guess that's what drew me onto this. You can see the inner workings of the chuck and everything and all different types of chucks and there is a bit coming up that I absolutely love with the augers showing the different augers how they go into the wood how they fix themselves in and twist in different styles different ways to apply pressure with the auger uh, how they come into the woods, even some showing how it breaks out of the wood on the other side. So you can see, I mean, look at that drawing, it's phenomenal. I just love looking through this book. I think that's the main source of inspiration, really. This section talks about chisels, and you can see how we're talking about grain, direction, and everything coming into here with the chisel, different ways to hold the chisel, how to approach different cuts, and you know, like the end grain here and stuff like that. Just another incredible section. Showing you not only techniques, but like I said, incredible artwork. And delving into different kinds of chisels as well. This section about the jackknife really spoke to me, especially this sort of technique for cutting dowels, because it's something I do really often when I'm cutting dowels. To make little models and stuff like that, or to attach things together with carving. And this sort of technique where you're holding the wood on the bench so it's a bit more safe for you and just take the knife down using the knife as kind of a fro to split pieces of wood and I just really thought that was a very relevant thing for carving and also you know for me especially. 
And this last section to show you is just about making a saw handle. And it basically gives you a template, shows you the direction of grain, shows you where all the kind of beveled parts are on the saw handle. And it was really difficult to pick out four best bits of this book. And they're probably not my four best bits because there's so much here to look through. I can't stress to you just how many amazing illustrations and techniques and different kind of tools you see in here that you might not even know of um, that there is in this book. It's absolutely phenomenal and I would recommend it to anyone who's into woodworking, anyone at all. The Woodwright Shop, a practical guide to traditional woodcraft by Roy Underhill. What can you say about Roy Underhill? I mean, he's one of the main reasons that I got into woodworking, into hand tool woodworking. Um, I started by watching his show, The Woodwright Shop, on DVDs that I had to buy from the US. He's a hand tool maestro and does his shows in 30 minutes um, in one take. So you get to see all the accidents and the problem solving that everything that goes into making the stuff that he makes and it's just awesome. I actually had to buy this book second hand as I have with all my Roy Underhill books because they just seem to be quite hard to find I guess. I did get it on I think Amazon or eBay um, but you can see it's um, got you know, a little bit of sort of water damage and stuff to it but the inside is intact and you can still read it and see all the pictures so I don't see the problem with it. But anyway now I'm going to take you through a few of my favourite sections. First one's about a shave horse and it's not just about shave horses but how to literally make one from a log. So here he is like hewing and cutting down the log and if you know anything about Roy's show you'll know that he basically shows you how to do everything. Here he is putting the legs in, uh, fixing it with a, a sort of pegged dowel, making all the adjustments to the head and everything. It's just amazing showing you all this stuff happening and you know if I know anything about Roy Underhill he probably made this in about 25 minutes or something. <laughs> Now this section on hay forks I find particularly cool because these are actually branches that have been split. So if you can see here, this is like the the branch as it is. And as it comes down here, it's been split into three sections, five sections, three sections. And the sections are being held apart by dowels. And I just that just blows my mind at how cool that is. Here's another fantastic section on how to make the notches for log houses or for cabins, whatever you want to call them. So he's showing you how to use a scribe and everything and make the notches so they fit in. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes into packing the moss into all the joints and everything as well. So I'm pretty sure that's where I, where I learned all that stuff from his show. So just all this very, very cool old ways, old techniques sort of stuff that he goes through and it's just amazing what he does and how many people he's inspired to follow along in his hand tool woodworking as well. Before we get to number one I just want to say a big thank you to my patrons. You guys are fantastic. If you want to help support the channel there's a link in the description to do so. Thank you. A Reverence for Wood by Eric Sloan. My favourite woodworking book for breaking out of a creative funk. Eric Sloan it's such a comforting way of writing that it makes it hard to realise how much time has passed while reading. Um, he's also responsible for all the illustrations in this book, which are incredible and obviously add to the attraction of just being able to get through the book so easily. And even though it's quite small, there's just so much information contained in it. There's lots of books that discuss, discuss wood shrinkage and... This one displays it in such a nice way. I just, I, I feel like not looking at it in any other books after seeing this. But just this whole diagram, and you can see how they look inside the log, what they want to do when they dry, how you can kind of remedy it if you want to, just in this old little A5 page. This section goes through a few door designs and latches and porches and things like that and oh, I just I find it hard to stop looking at these because just the way they're drawn and the shading and everything I just love it 
And this section is fantastic because it's about mauls, or sometimes you call them beetles. So it's like a big wooden club that you use to hit against gluts or wedges or a throw to split wood. And it shows you how it's kind of part of the tree there, how you use the root for the head, because that's often the, the part that can take the most um, damage, you know, it can take the most damage before it breaks. So you know it will last quite a long time. And uh, this is something I've used quite a lot. I've learnt it from Roy Underhill, this sort of stuff, but as much as I like Roy, these illustrations are just so nice at explaining things and making them more clear. And this is a really nice addition in the back of the book. It's about typical American trees. Now, I should say, actually, that this book is very much kind of American-focused. I think that might be a theme in a lot of Eric Sloan's books. There's lots of American-related stuff. Um, but I thought this was excellent because, once again, he has the illustrations. He has all the descriptions down here. What to look out for, how to identify them. Uh, sometimes what they're good for, you know. And, I mean, I, I could read a whole book like this with these kind of sketches in. But wait, there is a bonus book. And it's actually a book I wrote myself. And now it's not some kind of complicated guide or historical reference or any kind of inspiring thing in that kind of way but it is in fact a kid's book that I wrote and my brother illustrated about an angry mallet. This book's called The Crashing Bashing Mallet. Now this mallet wants to crash and bash his way through life but learns that he can't apply that to every situation and sometimes needs to accept help from his friends. I made another video of me reading the whole story here and there's a link in the description if you would like to buy it. It's available on Amazon all over the world. Thank you very much for having a look and catch you next time.